Happy Sunday, guys. We're here today, um, unusually, not really to discuss Italian cooking, but Italian eating. We are here uh, to explain uh, once for all uh, how a normal Italian menu works. Because we received a lot of comments to question how you Italians eat. Yeah, you know, on the channel we talk a lot about first courses and second courses. And uh, I know I had the experience of traveling to Italy for the first time and opening an Italian menu and being confused. And ironically, the more I learned, the more confused I became until you get to a certain point. So we're gonna get to that point today. So we're gonna eat a full five course meal. And the first thing to throw you right off the bat is that a five course meal is kind of more like a seven course meal. Seven? Maybe. So this is kind of what I'm talking about. This isn't really a course, but it's a super important part of the meal that needs some discussion. What we have in front of us, which is bread, is maybe the real staple Italian ingredient, Italian food. food yeah. Everyone thinks that for us Italian, the most important thing is uh, pasta or is pizza. No, for our bread. the most important thing is bread because it doesn't exist in Italy a table where people they sit to eat and there isn't bread. It's like almost illegal. I can't imagine your family, like let's say you, you went to sit down for dinner and discovered you were out of bread. No, it's a tragedy. There would be no, there would be no dinner. It would be like, we need to go find, we need to make bread or find bread. Like we need bread. We can't eat without bread. Bread is uh, fundamental on every Italian uh, family, in every Italian uh, restaurant. When you sit in a restaurant, the first thing that uh, is brought to your table, if you want or don't want, is uh, the bread. <laughs> well, that's something that is kind of interesting here in the US because that used to be the case. I remember when I was a kid, you go to just about any restaurant and they give you bread, but it seems to be coming more and more rare. Yes, because here in America, you start a war against bread in general. <laughs> when, when we did used to have restaurants that served bread, um, especially in Italian restaurants, everyone would put olive oil on their little plate, maybe some pepper, and dip the bread in that. And that's what they used the bread for. In Italy, it doesn't really work like that. Now, if you go in a restaurant, it's real that on the table, you will find at the beginning bread, and also like olive oil, salt, pepper, and usually there is also balsamic vinegar. The fact that these two elements are together on the table, it doesn't mean that you need to combine them. Because usually we don't, before we start to eat, we don't start to dip bread in olive oil. And for sure, we don't dip bread in vinegar. Also because if you do like that, you eat all the bread and in the moment in which you need to start actually to eat your uh, lunch, your dinner, you are already full, so. Yeah, it's meant to last through the meal and well, we'll, we'll get to all that. Okay, that is one of my favorite moments. Before we actually start the meal, it wouldn't really be an Italian meal without some wine. What is this? Oh, Ciro. This is a Ciro Bianco. It's a Calabrian wine. It's a very, very good wine. And uh, we choose to drink a Ciro Bianco because I'm from Calabria and I really like my Southern wine. It is important to point out the, the sort of cultural thing about how you don't Drink without eating or eat without drinking. Chin chin. Chin chin. So <laughs> the antipasto is kind of funny because it's both one of the easiest parts of the meal 
for an outsider like me to understand because it's essentially an appetizer, but it's also the most dangerous. And when, for instance, we have guests in Italy, like on our tour, they can get into some trouble with this one. Is uh, one also maybe of my favorite course during a meal. Antipasto is something that you eat before all the rest, because antipasto means before the meal. Just to, let's say, open your stomach, start your, um, your ap 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 appetite. Appetite. So it's something that uh, can involve the various kind of food. In this case, we have uh, some cheese, a little bit of prosciutto crudo. We have some uh, preserved uh, artichokes. Yeah. Preserved vegetables. We have some olives, but there are also other There's things. So many things. That's that the you problem. Can it's like. <laughs> Bruschette. You can have bruschette, you can have uh, Fri little fried things, fried meatballs. There's just fried like snacks, so much. Uh, you can even have... even smaller portions of things that could be more of a main course thing. Like, like caponata. Yeah, or even a parmigiana di melanzane, a small melanzane. thing of like that. So it can really, like appetizers, it can really be anything. Except salad. Mm. Because I know that usually here in US uh, you are used to start your meal with a salad. But salad for us Italian isn't an antipasto. And it's dangerous because you arrive at that moment that actually you want to eat, so they bring to you all this kind of food that you can snack on. And you start where you don't really eat. And though, you don't really... It, there can be so much food in the antipasto. Time and time again, it happened at our wedding with my family. We had this huge spread of, uh, of antipasto foods. Uh, it happens on the tours and people go crazy and they eat all this food. They're having all this amazing stuff and like meatballs and fried potatoes and all that stuff. And then they're like, oh, I'm so stuffed. I don't know if I have room for dessert. And it's like, Guys, we haven't even hit the first course yet. <laughs> and also, when you're in a normal restaurant in the big cities, like, like Roma, Firenze, Milano, in the restaurant they bring you a menu, so you choose which kind of antipasto you want. But more you go in the south or more uh, not fancy, is the place where you eat. You can uh, actually ask to bring something to start. <laughs> Like for example, just bring me something. Perfetto. So the, I was doing, this is actually the movement that my dad does every time that he goes out uh, in a restaurant and say, bring me something. <laughs> so we don't really know what sometimes this something is, but we know that something delicious. And we anti with the antipasto, you eat the bread. You have the bread on the table because uh, prosciutto needs to be eaten with the bread. Because a piece of cheese needs to be eaten uh, with the bread. But yeah, in general, if you're ordering in a restaurant, you won't get in trouble because you will have ordered your specific things. But if you go to like an Italian family's feast or Sunday lunch or something, be careful because that, that first big wave of food, there's a lot more coming after it. All right, now the meal is really getting going because we've arrived at Il Primo, the first course. And the first course in Italy is always or pasta or rice, which means that it needs to be a carb-based dish. Would polenta be a first course sometimes? Yes, yes because polenta is carb. Exception is for potatoes, except if they are gnocchi. So if potatoes, they become gnocchi, it's a first course. A single potatoes is never a first course. One important thing to remember about first course meals, such as risotto or pasta, is that they're very time sensitive things. So as we've said before on the channel, the sort of rule is you dig in right away. So before we talk more about the first course, let's try this pasta. What is this, by the way? This is one of the most simple Italian pasta dish, which is pasta and cherry tomatoes. <laughs> Quick, easy, simple, nothing too complicated. Buon appetito! Mm, still one of my favorites. Yeah, so if you go to a restaurant and you look on the menu, you'll see the primi, 
And that's where you'll find carbonara or ravioli or whatever, all the pastas and stuff, risotto. The idea is to start the meal with carbs. With fiber, sarper. With fiber, yes, I like with that. With fiber. With fiber. With fiber, no, with carbs. So it's like with fiber. It's very important to understand about the first course. You don't put usually pasta or rice on the bread. Like scooping it up, you mean? See, you also give a bite of pasta and a bite of bread. Mm. Except if you are not my cousin. <laughs> If you are my cousin, maybe this can happen. But normal people, no, we, we don't do. If someone invites you actually on the table, you will find a lot of other uh, things, not just the pasta. Maybe you can find, I don't know, as I said, the bread, maybe some leftover from the antipasto. Maybe you can find also already a side dish, like a vegetable-based dish. That doesn't mean that you need to mix uh, what you find on the table in your plate. There is nothing more triggering to an Italian than serving them a plate of pasta with something else on the plate. Like no meat, not a big slab of chicken on the plate. There are a few exceptions actually though, like um, um, also buco and risotto alla milanese, but that's a rare exception. Maybe one, uh, maybe the only one that I can think of, uh, because uh, it's like uh, it never comes into your mind to have a plate of spaghetti and on top a cotoletta. When you and I first met, and you know, you would like almost die if you saw uh, in like American restaurants how you have like a big pile of spaghetti and then like a big piece of meat on top of it or something. And I was always like, ah, I don't get it, what's the big deal? But I realized there's a really important reason for that and that's because the meat that you put on your pasta or next to your pasta, you eat with a fork and a knife, but you, you don't eat pasta with a knife. So if you're cutting your meat, you're inevitably cutting up your pasta, like cutting your spaghetti, look at her right now, cutting up your spaghetti into tiny little pieces. Pasta or rice, they are their own thing. You have your plate, you enjoy, you eat, and that's it. We do need to talk about the important role that bread does play in the first course, but first we need to finish our pasta. Absolutely. <laughs> A few moments later. Okay, now we're ready because the pasta is gone, but we have all this delicious sauce left on the plate that can't go to waste. So that is the moment in which you take some bread and what you do, you clean. <laughs> And you have a name for this. See, we call this scarpetta. And this is uh, a symbol, a sign that actually you loved your plate of pasta. Because the idea is it was so good that I need to clean my plate. If we were in a restaurant or if we were in an Italian home, a plate like that is the best thing that actually you can give back because you appreciate your food so much that it's all cleaned. Although be careful if you're in a home, that means, oh good, here, have some more. <laughs> be careful. Okay, now that our plates are squeaky clean, it's time for the second course. What is this second course? This second course is uh, most of the time uh, what you call here in America a protein based dish, which means it can be meat, can be fish. Then in Italy, we are uh, very, very attached also to our vegetarian second, vegetable based second, such as, for example, parmigiana di melanzane or gatto di patate. So, the second course is pretty much everything that isn't like strictly carb based. So, if it isn't like pasta or risotto or like polenta, that's the secondo. It's the second. So yeah, strictly speaking, if you're having a full five course meal, you will first have the primo, which will then be followed by the secondo, the second course. However, and this trips people up, including me when I first started going to Italy, you open up an Italian menu and you see, often it's translated, it'll say like, you know, the antipasto, you sort of get that. You're like, okay, appetizers. First course, you're like, all right, I see pastas and stuff. And then you see the second course. I think a lot of people wonder like, am I expected to get a first and a second course? Now Nowadays, uh, not really. It's like also with Italians, when we go to a restaurant, we don't order from the antipasto to the last 
the dish to the dessert. Usually what we do, we decide antipasto plus a primo and a dessert, an antipasto plus a secondo and a dessert. There are occasions where actually we sit and we, as we say, we honor the table from the antipasto to the dessert. But these are occasions such as a celebration, it can be Christmas, it can be Easter. Sunday lunch at home. Sunday lunch at home when me Maybe all the big families yeah. uh, eating all together, or maybe in the case of, I don't know, an anniversary, a birthday. That are the cases in which uh, we play the heavy cards. <laughs> it's worth pointing out, though, that if you do go to a restaurant in Italy, be aware that usually, because the menu is set up to have the first and the second course, usually the serving sizes will be smaller than what here we would just call an entree, you know? Because the idea is sort of that your meal is split up between an antipasto, at least a primo or a secondo, maybe a side dish, a dessert, etc. So what do we have here? Here at Arper we have uh, a stew, mm -hmm. what we call a spezzatino, and this time is made out of goat meat. And it smells really good. I used a lot of onion, uh, tomatoes, uh, meat, some wine, um, from your reaction. Oh, so good. Now, you might notice that while we have our secondo here, we also have something else. What we have in front of us is contorno, which means side dish. It's a vegetable basic dish and it's something that you order because you eat together with the secondo. Together, pay attention, doesn't mean in the same plate. No, because you don't want to mix all the flavor. Someday I promise I'll get, I'll get a picture of her reaction every year when she sees my big Thanksgiving plate with everything, all the mashed potatoes and gravy and turkey. This in Italy doesn't exist. Every course should have his own plate. These are uh, fennel uh, Mediterranean style, uh, let's go like that, uh, is what we call finocchi gratinati, which means fennel, uh, bread, crumb, uh, some uh, cherry tomatoes, black pepper, anchovies, uh, baked uh, in the oven. This is a uh, tomato based, uh, it's a saucy dish. Well, here we have uh, what we say gratinato. So we don't mix uh, because can you understand that that goes here? No, those would not go well in the same no, plate. No, no, you before eat. But mashed potatoes and gravy do. Buon appetito, Arper. Mangia, mangia, Arper. Mangia, mangia, Arper. This is the kind of sauce that Scarpetta was made for. The See? sauce is so good. It's like just the thought of losing any of it. Also here, if you really appreciate your dish, it's a very good thing to do something like that because you don't want to waste. Now, if you've been doing the math in your head regarding our five course meal, uh, you've probably thought, well, they had the antipasto and they had the primo, the first course, the secondo, the second course, the contorno, the side dish. It must be time for dessert. But depending on where you're eating, you, you might be wrong. And that's why this is, this is probably the most dangerous part of a, of a feast. Because uh, at the end of this four course, there is uh, not really a course. There's a break, there's, there's a, a pause. Yes, because it's like you need Which to... Which could last like an, an hour or more. Yes, because you need to understand. You are at this point, you are chatting, you are drinking, you are happy. So it's the moment in which you can just relax a little bit and let... Uh, Digest. See, make some space. <laughs> and how we make in Italy some space... We By eating some... more. <laughs> See, but this is for a cleaning. <laughs> I guess you would call this this course that isn't really a course. You would call it frutta, fruit, because it's normally some fruit comes out. Um, but it can also be other things like peanuts in Calabria is a really big thing. And my personal favorite, you'll just have like often piles of peanuts on the table and everyone's just sitting there. Another favorite of mine is fava beans, big fava beans in the pod and you bust them open and eat them maybe with some cheese. But the fruit is what trips people up 
because uh, let's say you've come on the, the pasta grammar tour and you had a huge antipasto that you thought was the entire meal and then you had a first course and a second course and a side dish and then maybe someone brings out a big tray of melon and you're like, oh, oh, a light little dessert to finish things off. That's not dessert. <laughs> now, fruit is something that uh, is not mandatory to eat. <laughs> you wouldn't like, have this at a restaurant? Uh, no, usually in a restaurant you can decide if you want to have some fruit, like usually they serve, I don't know, pineapple or something more uh, exotic. A tom, you can have cherries when they are in season, you can have oranges, uh, banana, pear, maple, all kinds of fruit. It's up to you. You can eat it uh, or you can also live there. It again kind of goes back to the philosophy of not drinking without eating. And if you have something like this, it usually means it's a Sunday lunch or it's a holiday or something where everyone's gathered together and everyone's drinking and sitting at the table for a long time. You guys have to understand, this meal we're talking about can be like, many hours, if not an entire day. So in that pause, after the kind of main courses and the dessert, people are still sitting there chatting and drinking, and it's like considered just totally backwards to not have something on the table that you can snack on. And now we've come to the final and definitely simplest course of all, il dolce the dessert. Yes, Arpil, the last one is the dessert. And what is a dessert? It's, it's a, a dessert. dessert. <laughs> now, in a restaurant, uh, you order uh, the dessert and they bring, bring you one dessert what you order. If it happens that you are uh, in a family meal, uh, maybe you have uh, three, four, uh, five dessert. Uh, so it's up to you if you want to choose one and eat just that or just uh, try, jump. One of my favorites is when the family goes to like the, the bakery and they'll just get a tray or several trays often of all the different kinds of pasticceria treats like little cannoli and sfogliatelle and all the little cookies uh, and stuff. That is uh, what we call pastarelle mm -hmm. and actually is uh, a very long tradition because back in the past you didn't always have uh, a dessert available. So Sunday, think after the mess, people they went to the pasticceria to buy a tray of dessert and bring a tom to, to enjoy because it was their lunch, it was their meal of the week. And still now we keep this tradition and it's always amazing to see someone coming home with this tray of dessert. All wrapped up. You order it by the kilo. What are we enjoying today? Today we are enjoying a slice of pastiera napoletana because Easter is approaching, so I'm... Uh... You're, you're using any excuse you can to eat pastiera. Yes, yeah, this is one of my favorite desserts. Buon appetito! Buon appetito. See what pastiera has? Everything. See? What is that taste? The orange blossom. Of fiori d'arancio, that... Mm-hmm. You know what Italy needs? Something like bread that you can use to make a dessert scarpetta. A brioche. There you go. That should be a thing. Okay, pastiera doesn't need one, but let's say you have like a tiramisu or something. You have some brioche and you... <laughs> Innovating. <laughs> After the dessert, we close our meal with caffè e ammazza caffè. Caffè is coffee, like this. Ammazza caffè is what you call uh, the digestive. It can be a limoncello, that for sure is one of the most famous, but it can be also an amaro, it can be grappa. It should help you to digest, but I don't really know if. <laughs> if actually it helps you to digest. Thank you guys for joining us today. We hope uh, we answered a, a few questions about the Italian menu. Before we go, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action. He made these very beautiful looking gnocchetti sardi. Very, very good job. 
We have a video, I'll put it up here, all about how to make fresh semolina pasta. If you wanna become a pasta grammarian, just hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Follow us on social media, at Pasta Grammar, and uh, tag us in a picture. Maybe send us uh, send us some meal pictures. With antipasto, primo, secondo, contorno, frutta, dessert, caffè, e ammazza caffè. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao. You know, there's a course that actually, I just realized we completely forgot about, which is the four hours after dessert has been had and everyone's still partying and hanging out and gathering and celebrating. And someone goes, all right, I'm just gonna make a big thing of aglio olio e peperoncino at like midnight. That's the course we forgot about.